The seemingly endlessness of the sky above us left man wondering for years what exactly could be up there. Curiosity got the best of us and we decided to do something about it. And after a series of failures, in 1957, we finally got it right. The first artificial satellite was launched and thus began our journey into space. By 1961, we had figured out a way to send humans out, and Lieutenant Yuri Gagarin became the first person to leave Earth from Russia and orbit Earth in Vostok 1, reaching an altitude of about 202 miles. By 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first man to land on the moon, and we knew then that there was no stopping us. From orbiting Earth to landing on the moon, space exploration has evolved to visiting other planets to find out which could support life. With Mercury being too close to the sun to visit, and other planets are simply unfavorable for spacecrafts to land on, talk more of humans. Mars has turned out to be our most favorable destination. Once we found organic material pointing to a life that once existed on Mars, there was no stopping us. We were heading for Mars. Over the years, scientists and astronauts have discovered so much more about Mars, and in today's video, we'll be sharing some of the most interesting things that have been discovered on Mars. There is evidence of persistent liquid water on Mars. Although Mars is currently known for its dust storms, an extremely thin atmosphere and its icy polar caps that hold water that doesn't flow, spacecrafts and gleaned research over the past years have discovered that Mars was once home to persistent liquid water. Lending more evidence to this discovery is that on the Martian surface, scientists have found features that are unquestionably byproducts of ancient flowing liquids. Things like branching streams, river valleys, oceans, deltas, and basins. The spacecraft Curiosity found smooth rounded pebbles that rolled downstream for a few miles into a river that is at least ankle to hip deep. It also discovered that over 1,000 vertical feet of rock was formed originally as mud at the bottom of a series of shallow lakes. That must be a long time without water for mud to become rocks. Though there are currently no signs of persistent liquid or flowing water on the planet, Scientists believe that deep within Mars' surface, there may still be water. Organic carbon has been found in Mars' rocks. Carbon molecules form life's basic building blocks upon which every other thing exists. And after a long search and several samples, we found these molecules on Mars. Ancient Mars had enough carbon in the rocks and soils to serve as raw material for life. It was also discovered that lake bed rocks had a diversity of organic molecules which may be fragments of more complex organic molecules that have degraded over billions of years. The presence of these molecules do not necessarily equate that life exists or has even existed on this planet. However, it tells us that the raw ingredients needed to create life still exist there till today. The Presence of Active Methane Methane alongside carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen have also been detected on Mars, and in dangerously high spikes these past few years. This was a surprising discovery for scientists, as methane is thought to be destroyed quickly by the presence of other chemicals, so they initially thought it couldn't have survived. However, by testing a powder sample collected by NASA spacecraft, high spikes of methane were detected. Scientists believe this spike has something to do with seasons on Mars, because they noticed a tenfold increase in just a two-month Earth period. Curiosity, the spacecraft, equipped with a special sensor for methane, found that methane averaged about one part methane to per two billion parts of Mars air. On one hand, it's exciting news that methane is present on Mars, because methane can be produced by living organisms or chemical reactions. However, many speculations have been made concerning its source, with some citing non-biological sources such as comets, water, and rock interaction, and degradation of interplanetary dust particles by ultraviolet light. Some others speculate biological sources such as microbes for being a source of methane to Mars, but without tangible proof to show that microbes have ever existed on Mars, it all still remains speculation. Dust storms are a thing. As rainstorms are to planet Earth, so are dust storms to planet Mars. Think about deserts like the Sahara on Earth and how much dust is billowing through the air at every given minute. Now think about it as a storm raging and wrapping up everything in sight. On Mars, wind is constantly blowing and grinding away at the geology, which leaves a lot of dust behind. And with nowhere else and nothing to be done with the dust, it gets whipped up into huge clouds waiting to storm down upon the empty planet. These dust clouds then absorb sunlight and heat up, making the winds more intense, repeating the process of leaving more dust behind. 
With no water, rains, or ocean bodies on Mars every couple of years depending on how heavy the dust clouds become, the dust storms will grow so large that they wrap themselves around the entire planet. As an effect of the storm noted by Curiosity, it was discovered that with each dust storm, the sunlight in Gale's crater would decrease by 97%. Even with a thin atmosphere that barely allows for any activity, the wind is still capable of moving sand around, so much so that it creates sand dunes. Human life can survive on Mars. 3.5 billion years ago, humans could have survived on Mars. Scientists have discovered that Gale's crater was capable of supporting life at that time. This is also scientifically correct with findings discovered so far, as Gale's ability to survive life 3.5 billion years ago points to a past when Mars's atmosphere was thicker and had more liquid water that could support life. Magnetite discovered oxygen in some of the drill samples which showed compatibility for habitation and preservation. Though all spacecrafts sent to Mars as of now haven't gone specifically to detect life, their ability to point to necessary conditions such as liquid water, which is life's basic building block, also point to energy sources that life could make use of. Also, the discovery of elements such as phosphorus, sulfur, and nitrogen suggest potential for the presence of life. The sample obtained when further drilled also revealed clay minerals that didn't have too much salt. This suggests that drinkable water once flowed on the grounds of Mars. Things like this will have you thinking, what if a few billion years from now, Earth also turns into a sandstorm without any sign of life or water? Radiation can be harmful to human life. You may want to hold off on signing up to become one of the very first people to move to Mars, because it has been discovered that the radiation on Mars could pose a serious health risk to human life. On one of NASA's visits with Curiosity, it was discovered that the radiation levels detected by the spacecraft exceed NASA's career limit for astronauts, which is a lot of radiation considering that astronauts already have a higher radiation threshold thanks to their spacesuits. Using silicon detectors to measure radiation, it was found that the variations were of longer timescales and were driven by the thickness of the Mars atmosphere. They found two forms of radiation present in outer space which stand as potential health risks to humans, galactic cosmic rays, also known as GCRs, and solar energetic particles, SEPs. GCRs were found to be present due to supernova explosions and other high energy events outside the solar system, and SCPs were linked with coronal mass ejections and solar flares from the sun. NASA does hope to make use of their spacecraft to design safer missions and trips for human beings and hopefully find a way to bring down radiation levels on the planet. Low enough that we soon have Disneyland Mars. By the 2030s, NASA hopes to start bringing civilians to the red planet, but billionaires such as Bezos and Branson are beating NASA to it, with commercial space travel and tourism set to kick off by the end of the year. Bezos and Branson both visited space on their cell phone rockets barely in July 2020, with a flight time of around 10 minutes. And as we know, both are shrewd businessmen and will not hesitate to turn this into yet another money-making venture. This exhilarating experience is going to come at a hefty cost for civilians once preparation for ticket prices are concluded. Currently, rides to space by Bezos are going up for auctions with bidding going as high as $100 million. For Virgin Galactic owned by Branson, reservations are being made for a 10 minutes ride to space and back for $250,000 a seat. That's a lot of money to see the world above us. That brings us to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button. For more videos like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you never miss an upload. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.